wow, look at this. Frozen vegetable, tomato. Fresh vegetable, tomato. Wow, just wow, period. How can they be that stupid? This microwave deserves to be taken apart. Welcome back to the Barefoot Electrician. Today I'm gonna show you how to take a microwave apart. Like what the different parts are and what's a no touchy, what's a touchy, and what's just a whatever you want. So <clears throat> to start off, you're gonna have some Phillips head screws here, 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 and here. But then these right here, these are tamper-proof screws. See that little dent right there? That prevents you from using a normal screw bit. I'll explain how to get that out in a sec. First, let's get these other guys out. Wait, ah, screwdriver set to the wrong way. comes time for the tamper proof screws. For this you're gonna need a set of pliers like this or maybe like this. So let's try this first. Hold on, no I need to tighten it. Okay so after <clears throat> some struggling and thinking we finally got this to start turning. Round and round and round, 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 round. You can probably play the Jeopardy theme song as this thing turns. But that's one out of two. Okay, that's off. Might make a bit of effort, but you can just pull this off. Actually, Flathead screwdriver might be better. Do this job. Uh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, this is what you'll see first. You have this. This is only sometimes. This is the noise filter. Not much use for it unless you're making like a wall appliance or something. Which case, like maybe some sort of sensitive thing. This resonates at a extremely precise frequency and noise could cancel out the frequency which, mean that, which means that the microwave wouldn't do anything. So that's what this is for. <clears throat> you have the magnetron right here. This is the resonator. And like the name implies, see, look, magnet, Ron, magnets. So there are two ring magnets over down here. Probably hard to see on the camera, but yeah. <clears throat> then you have light bulb right here, thermal fuse. These are the things you can touch. This one, be sort of careful with. This, or this, or this. These guys right here really hurt. Those can still be charged, so watch out for those. This guy is the, don't bring your fingers even close to it. That is the microwave oven high voltage capacitor. You're going to want to test it before you even bring your fingers close to it. <clears throat> but then that right there is a 7 kilovolt diode. Can come in many different voltages. But then here, this is exciting. This is the microwave oven transformer. You can touch it after you've cut these wires because, of course, it's hooked up to this. But <clears throat> then this outputs a voltage of two kilovolts but with peak currents of around 1.5 amps. I almost said 100 amps. Well, no. Back here is the 
microwave oven circuit board and if you short out some of the limit switches here and then take the output of some of the relays then you can make your own little timer for certain devices <clears throat> but <clears throat> this is also good because it has a little 120 to 13.5 and 2 volt transformer that good you can make like a inverter with it or one time I made a little Christmas light system with it <clears throat> and then you have some relays over here still haven't been able to figure out what type of relays we got but those are your basic large components don't forget the fan as well then I get my screwdriver again Gonna see a lot of screws. You're wondering what treasures these hold, probably. And let me give you an answer to that question. They are pretty darn epic. The only thing is, this thing weighs like 16 pounds, and if you take out these four screws, it's gonna start like some sort of chain reaction is going to hit the magnetron and if it hits it too hard it will shatter the beryllium oxide ring and then the power will come into the air if you don't run out of the room in time then you can inhale it and get lung cancer so just these four screws not good so save those for later moving this now. Um, yep. It moves. And then again, these are no touchies. And this is the smallest microwave oven capacitor I've actually ever seen. And this diagram over here. You guys can't see it yet. Okay, but you see that right down there, there's a little diagram that has a resistor in, in parallel with the capacitor. And so that means that there is actually a 10 mega ohm resistor inside there. You can get that if you want. And it also has some oil in there. But then, here's what I was interested in. Here's a little synchronous motor. These, if you crank them with your hand, you can get around 300 volts off them. Let's cut the wire. In here, there's two connection slots, so stick one probe in the open connection slot there. And then the other right here. And then look at your multimeter. If you don't get a one in the last digit spot or like a slight voltage up, then it should be good. But just to be safe, I'd recommend like connecting a wire between the two pins. So <clears throat> this capacitor in this case, that one is good, so. Most of them are good since they have the resistor across here. So here, just if your capacitor was charged, first of all, be prepared. There's gonna be a bit of a bang. So wear earmuffs. Just kidding, don't. And then you would just connect it from that pin to that pin. Leave it there for a few seconds. Then you're safe. Touchy, 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 touchy. Even though I'm still wearing gloves. None of the other components can really hold charge except for the noise filter and this guy. So now start with removing the heavier components. Okay, that's the transformer off, then
correct that from transformer off to transformer and capacitor off. And now this you can just toss aside. So <clears throat> now you're down to these. So there is some thermal fuses over here. And right here you can see that they are linked in series. This is designed so that if one of the components fails, it shuts off the other components. It's a smart design. Smart for someone who thinks that tomatoes are a vegetable. But again, that still makes them pretty dumb. Thermal fuses are pretty cool, but there's two types of them. There is resettable thermal fuses, and there is not, and there is non-resettable thermal fuses. This one is 105 degrees Celsius, somewhere around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not good at calculating Celsius and Fahrenheit, but then the sun's pretty good one of the higher temperature ones this one is 180 degrees celsius <coughs> the noise filter is a bit stuck so let's flip this over project seems to involve a lot of flipping. This looks like you should just be able to pry it. Ugh. For some reason, the inside of a microwave always smells like food. Okay, so this, in this case, is just held on by like a screw and some tabs, so we just pull this off. The fan, like I said, isn't of much use. You can spin it around or blow it. Hold on. Okay, finally corrected my mistake. This is the magnetron, but real quick, the danger I'll point out is, see that right there? Let's put it simple. Break this equals lung cancer. Don't break this equals no lung cancer. So, yeah. But it's actually the most important part of the microwave is the magnetron. It emits a high frequency beam that resonates perfectly with water and it moves the water molecules around remotely and then it will create friction which creates heat and heats up the food. But due to this, it also can like induce a voltage into metal and that is why you should never put metal in the microwave. It can also bounce the waves back and damage the magnetron. But it's cool because it demonstrates wireless energy transmission. If you, I'm not saying you should do this, but if you put a, but if you were to put a neon light bulb inside a microwave for like two seconds, you would see you would see it glow. So, 
that is something cool. Though, I, like I said, I would strongly recommend you do not do that. If any parents are watching this video, tell your kids, if they have the chance, don't put a neon bulb in the microwave. Because it can permanently damage your microwave and destroy it. Here's the little circuit board. You have relay here, transformer, more relays. You have a little puzzle electric buzzer. If you take this out of its casing, you can use it as a little pulse AC generator from vibrations. For here, for some reason, there's only like just one 1000 microfarad capacitor per board. Then there some of these. These, in this case, are 10 microfarad. Then you have some diodes over here. These might be involved, these might be involved in the bridge rectifier, though usually they're arranged in a different way when they are part of the bridge rectifier, though they probably are part of the, the rectifier. Actually, I'm almost certain they are because there's this capacitor right here. This one I was just about to say, I guess it was a 470 microfarad, and it is. Usually for stuff like that of capacitors that size, they have 470 microfarads. This is just the ribbon cable to the touch panel. Popcorn, potato, pizza, beverage, frozen dinner, reheat, tomato, frozen tomato, soup, power, timer, cook. Then right here you have a little LCD display screen right here. It's pretty cool. On this you also have a lot of mini transistors in case you didn't notice for some reason. I think, well this is always the display control chip and then probably just has two low voltage outputs and it goes into these which control the digits on this. So basically this was a microwave, so we took it apart and hope you learned a thing or two all along the way because apparently tomato microwaves will provide some educational value. Why does it even want to say tomato in a microwave? Because if you put a tomato in a microwave it essentially explodes. But this has been the barefoot electrician i am actually barefoot as we speak signing out <laughs>